You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 24th of April. BJP rips into Congress aid Sam Petroda's inheritance tax remarks. US wants Pakistan to keep sanctions in mind amid trade talks with Iran. And Nepal seeks Qatar's help to free student help by Hamas. And now for all the details. Ahead of the second phase of elections on Friday, a war of words has ensued between India's ruling BJP and main opposition party Congress over the opposition leader's statement over redistribution of wealth. In the latest, close aide of Congress Gandhi family and chairman of Indian Overseas Congress Sam Pitroda emphasized the need for a policy toward wealth distribution as he elaborated on the concept of inheritance tax prevailing in America. Advocating for a similar policy, Petroda said, if someone worth billion dies, his children gets the money and the public gets nothing. These are the kinds of issues people have to debate and discuss. When we talk about redistributing wealth, we are talking about new policies and new programs that are in the interest of the people and not in the interest of the super rich only, he added. Let me tell you, in America, there is an inheritance tax. So if, let's say, one has $100 million worth of wealth, and when he dies, he can only transfer probably 45% to his children. 55% is grabbed by government. Now, that's an interesting law. It says, you, in your generation, made wealth. You are leaving now. You must leave your wealth for public. Not all of it, half of it. Which to me sounds fair. In India, you don't have that. Following the remarks by the closet of Gandhi CN, BJP leaders including Prime Minister Narendra Modi have slammed Congress, accusing the grand old party of snatching rights of people's children. Addressing a rally in Chhattisgarh, PM Modi said, if Congress is voted to power, it will hit the public with higher taxes and after that, they will impose an inheritance tax. Your hard-earned money will not go to your children but in Congress' hand, he said in a jibe aimed at Congress election symbol. Echoing a similar stance, Home Minister Amit Shah slammed Congress and said, comments by Sam Petroda have exposed the grand old party's intention. He said Congress should either withdraw or accept that distributing wealth is their intention. Now these people have also come a step forward. Now Congress has to say that they will put inheritance tax. They will not get to meet with the mother and father of the father. They will not get to meet with the tax. आप जो अपनी मेहनत से संपत्ति जुटाते हैं वो आपके बच्चों को नहीं मिलेगी बल्कि कांग्रेस सरकार का पंजा उसे भी आपसे छीन लेगा कांग्रेस लीडर राहुल गांधी इन पास फ्यू रैलीज हैज लिंक्ड redistribution to the already promised caste census and said if Congress comes to power it will carry financial survey to find who holds India's wealth and after they will begin the revolutionary work of giving people what they are due. BJP leaders have used these remarks against the opposition heating up the election campaign. Meanwhile, slamming the Western media, India's Foreign Minister S. Shankar on Tuesday said that they behave like political players in India's elections. While addressing a forum in Hyderabad, Jayashankar said that the West thinks they are part of our electorate and it's time now that we disabuse them. And the best way to do that is by confidence. Lauding India's prominence on the global stage, Jayashankar said that there is a lot of interest in somehow accessing India, connecting to India and working with India. I get a lot of these noises from the Western press. And if they criticize our democracy, it's not because they lack information. It is because they think they are also political players in our election. 
Furthermore, criticizing India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, Jay Shankar said that several issues that the nation is facing today on its borders have their roots in the mistakes committed during the Nehruvian era. He said that the country's foreign policy decision-making for long has been under the shadow of diffidence, resulting in problems at the borders of China and Pakistan. We are talking of India first policy. He is saying China first in the UN. India follows after that. So, not putting, when we say an era of diffidence, an era of diffidence is not just an era of diffidence. It is an era actually where we, actually, we don't have clarity about our own national letters. That we somewhere, we mix a certain ideological outlook, uh, uh, belief in what sh should be our contribution to the world. And amid the visit of Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi to Pakistan, the U.S. on Tuesday warned Islamabad of potential risk of sanctions, adding that they will continue to disrupt and take actions against proliferation networks considering business deals with Iran. U.S. State Department spokesperson Vedant Patel advised everybody who is considering business deals with Iran to be aware of the potential risk of sanctions. Meanwhile, Raisi said that Tehran is ready to exchange its prowess in industry, science and technology with Pakistan. He said Iran made strides in these fields despite unfavorable conditions and was ready to exchange this knowledge with Islamabad. Pakistan and Iran have had a history of rocky relations despite a number of commercial pacts. This was the first visit of any foreign leader to Pakistan after the elections and was expected to be watched closely by the U.S. amid the Iran-Israel conflict. Moving on, fish farmers in Gilgit, Baltistan are worried over lack of infrastructure in the region to meet export demands and the government's negligence to boost the sector, a report. Trout fish farming is one of the popular occupations in Gilgit, Baltistan and also attracts tourists to the region. But fish farmers say the government's apathy to boost the sector has made it difficult for them to carry on. A fish farm owner said that a large number of tourists seek fish exports, but due to unclear policies and no basic infrastructure, they are unable to meet the demand. He said a lot of fish farms were also destroyed in the 2022 floods, but there has been no government relief or subsidies since then. जो जुगरोट गुरु है उधर ये बिना के कोई बाईस पाव हमारे सलाब में वो बह गए थे उनका नुकसान हुआ था माली गवर्नमेंट ने आके सर्वे किया सब कुछ उसका फाइल भी बंद किया लेकिन अभी तक हमें कुछ भी नहीं मिला है तो फार्मर्स बहुत सख्त परेशान है वो अपना दोबारा अपना फार्म बनाना चाहते हैं लेकिन सरमाया Gilgit Baltistan, originally a part of India, was illegally annexed by Pakistan seven decades ago. Locals blame Islamabad's indifferent attitude towards the illegally occupied region's falling economy has affected all sections of the society. Nepal's President Ramchandra Podal on Tuesday requested the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Ahmed Al Thani, for assisting in release of Nepali national Bipin Joshi, who is believed to be in captivity of Palestinian militant group Hamas following the deadly attacks on Israel last October. Talking to ANI, Kiran Pokhril, press advisor to Nepal president, confirmed the development and said, the president retreated safe being of Bipin Joshi was a major concern and requested Emir of Qatar for heightened negotiation to release him from the captivity. In response, the Emir pledged further efforts for the release of the Nepalese student. Local media reports have suggested. Notably, Doha has been involved in mediating the ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, which have been engaged in an armed conflict since October 2023. Meanwhile, on the second day of the Emir's state visit, both countries also signed eight agreements including cooperation in fields of culture, education and sports and for establishing a joint business council. Moving on, a severe week-long heat wave sweeping over Bangladesh has seen scorching temperatures rise up to 43 degrees Celsius as authorities issued a nationwide heat wave alert on Monday. Bangladesh Meteorological Department said due to increasing moisture incursion, the discomfort may increase during the next 72 hours. 
Authorities have temporarily shut schools for the week and asked people to stay out of the sun to avoid heat stroke. Workers who toil outdoors like laborers and rickshaw drivers say the brutal heat has become extremely challenging. <laughs> The heat wave has also left some animals in the zoo suffering and panting from the punishing heat. The government has directed all hospitals to stay prepared as heat strokes and dehydration may go rampant in the South Asian nation due to the heat wave. Amidst much fanfare and cheer, a sea of devotees on Tuesday congregated on the banks of the Vegai River in India's southern Madurai to witness the holy ritual of Lord Kalagar entering the river. The procession is the pinnacle event of the annual Chitrai festival which marks the celestial wedding of Hindu god Shiva known as Sundareshwar to his concert goddess Parvati known as Minakshi in southern India. The idol of the Hindu deity was adorned in green silk and was seated on a golden stallion wielding a sword. The annual festival has six major events that take place over the span of 15 days. Nikki Kalili Nanga, Moon Rigla in the Ching even the Tom, Sariana Crowd Arandalo in given the Elan Makal and the Rumba Sandosama, over Vashamanga and the Vidama and the Vinachi, Tero Tonita, Avlokutamanda, Elangi, Patamuchi, Nikki Vidia Kalami in a night brother. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.